Welcome back to the channel. Today's task is to start building a bike drawer for inside the rear garage of the motorhome. I'm going to put some boarding on this floor here because um, this original floor I'm not that keen to drill through that and actually perforate that because um, then you run the risk of leaks and the like. I've laid out the wooden battens in their positions uh, and I also added just an extra couple here and here. I'm ready to get started uh, getting the Sikaflex onto the wooden battens uh, to get them attached to the, the floor. Um, so I've added an extra couple um, just where these black boards here um, are going to join. Um, just to give a bit of extra reinforcement just at the edges. I'm just uh, zigzagging the sicker flex onto the back of the buttons. Okay, we'll get this stuck down. That's all the buttons um, stuck down. So these kind of two slightly longer ones uh, either the floor in there has a bit of a bow or the wood has a bit of a bow um, so i've just added a couple of weights that i had lying about just to add a wee bit of weight until all the sealant dries and um, the other thing i've done is at the edges here all the way along and obviously and underneath here i've left i've cut these slightly short so there's a few mil gap otherwise if the wood's pressed up against the back there it could kind of squeak while we're moving. The Sika Flex has set. Uh, yeah there's, there'll be no moving any of those um, so we'll get the boards on. The flooring that I'm going to use on top of the battens is recycled plastic and this I had bought for use in the bottom of the trailer so we had plenty of offcuts for that so as you can see it's pretty thick and doesn't really bend at all. I've had to cut it into three sections just so I can get it to fit actually inside and onto the floor. You'll see here I've made this wee uh, box and that's just to stop any of the wee electrics that were in that corner. Cables and wiring getting uh, bumped or pulled or anything like that. Just getting the last bit of the thread here put into position, tight at the joints and leave a wee gap here uh, at the seal. Also a wee bit of a gap up here but I can also put a, a wee edging strip along if I really want. I'm using the pencil marks that I made earlier on the, the back wall here and that actually shows where the battens are and where to put the screws in. That's all the screws in uh, for the boards. So I have gone for one, two, three across here and then plenty around the edges as well. I've decided to construct the drawer section out of some floorboards. Again, that I just have line about. So the thickness of this is actually 25 mil. So what I'll do is uh, we'll get those run through the planar thicknesser. I've cut the board to length and it's also been reduced in thickness as well. Uh, so this is now 18mm and it's still strong enough. And I'm going to be using these battens to attach uh, the, the bite drawer together. I've got my three bits of wood through the planar thicknesser and then I've also cut another board in two and I'm keeping it a bit thicker uh, down the edges. And at the moment, I'm just working my way around, um, drilling the hole and then putting a screw in 
uh, just to secure the side bits. Um, so that will give you an idea of kind of what it looks like. Using some nice long screws here. I've got the two edges on that the hinge are going to attach to. So now I've arranged these five battens. I've uh, pre-drilled these, um, so these are ready just to line up and attach. So that's all of the kind of cross strips all attached. I've also added these wee 90 degree brackets along there and also up here. These are the slides or the drawer rails. So they have a catch here so that when I'm in the van driving about, the bikes aren't going to slide back and forward. So you just do that to open it and then it, it slides out. So you can see there's some pretty big heavy duty ball bearings in there. So these are used in like fire engines and various other industrial applications where the drawers need to be really strong. So the next thing to do is to mount this onto this edge and then the other one on the other edge and then we can see about getting it mounted actually inside the motorhome. You can see I've already got these screws in here. If I just show you here, I've just finished putting that screw in and if I slide this along a bit then that will reveal another hole and it's the same all the way along and you just choose which ones you want to put in. This will be the full extension. I'm now just mocking up kind of the mounts and where the bike will sit. The width of the door here is too narrow to accommodate the handlebars so the fork will be attached to this and there'll be a bolt going through here into a T-knot at the bottom. That's the other hole drilled and I've actually drilled it so that it also comes through this batten as well as the actual top surface. This is called a T-nut. Um, use them a lot in climbing walls. That's how the holes are bolted on. So this just gets pushed in underneath and then it gets secured with two small screws. That's the fork mount attached to this bit of wood with the two bolts uh, that go into the T-nuts underneath. So the idea being, you would loosen off one enough for it to rotate and then remove the other one completely. And then this can rotate with the fork attached. You can turn it round, get the bars flush to go in the door and then put it back round Put the bolt in and tighten it up and you're ready to travel. Now you'll probably have already noticed but the difference in the floor height here and here. I've got these two small blocks here so one of those are going to each end and this longer block I'll slide into the, the middle and I'm just going to attach those with these uh, kind of handy angle brackets again. Now I'm working out uh, where the brackets are going to go uh, to actually attach the side of the drawer slides actually to the van. I'm just uh, marking up and then there's going to be another one up there at the top. I've actually fitted uh, these brackets here already uh, and on this side you can see I've bolted these blocks of wood to the floor, apart from the middle one, but I can do that now. And then it's a case of bolting down on this side as well. I'm now inside and I've got the drawer open. So the last thing I was doing was fixing everything on this side. But now that the drawer's open, 
I'm able to use these smaller angle brackets uh, that will fit in underneath here all the way along here and then I'll put one that was the, the kind of usual 2x2 two two here. I've just finished fitting this mount here so I've had to use a couple of blocks of wood just to build this up to get it high enough so that the handlebars here clear the rear wheel of the other bike that will be sitting here. This is the finished result. So I can pull this out. So just push it back in it in a bit more and you'll notice it's probably about an inch and a half too wide so the system that I use down here is definitely working um, so I just loosen off this bolt and take this bolt out completely and that allows me to pivot this round um, so I can get the bars turned round push the bike in turn them back round and then just put the bolt through. That's the best idea I've come up with. Uh, maybe there are better ideas. Uh, you can always leave me a comment if you think of something even better. But on a final note, what I've noticed is obviously in under here, um, I have a, a decent sized uh, gap that is the length of the, the drawer. So what I'm thinking is, I'm going to have another smaller drawer in here. I don't even think there would be any need for any rails or anything like that, or any runners. I might just have to put a few slides maybe here just to get over this slight lip. I could have a long narrow drawer that I could put inner tubes and lube and a few tools in uh, for when I'm away on trips. So that will be my next project.